Hey, welcome to LearnDev. In this video, we will cover the basics about JavaScript functions. I will explain you what functions are about, how and why to use them in your JavaScript code. Then we will learn everything about function declarations, parameters, invocations and more. Basically, a function is like a recipe. You write the ingredients and steps once, then you can make the same dish anytime you want. Take a look at this example function. It calculates the sum of two numbers. Every function consists of two main parts, the function header and the function body. The function header contains the function keyword, the function name, which should describe what the function does, and the input of the function, the so-called parameters. The function body contains the code which runs when the function is invoked. Functions can also return a value from the body, in this case, it's the result of the calculation. If we translate this function to our recipe example, the function name is the name of the dish. The parameter definitions are the ingredients of the dish. The function body symbolizes the steps needed to get to the final dish. And the return value is the final dish. Let's run the function a couple of times to see it in action. To invoke a function, we have to write the name of the function without the function keyword anywhere in the file. Then we have to pass the arguments within the parentheses. Let's calculate the sum of 4 and 5, so we pass those numbers as arguments to the function. But what are function arguments? When we define input variables for functions, those are called parameters, as explained earlier. But when we invoke a function and pass actual values into the function, those values are called arguments. Next, let's print the result of the function call to the console. So we assign it to a variable first. Next, we can log the result to the console. Have a look at the console output. It shows the correct result of the calculation. 5 plus 4 is 9 of course. Let's create some more sums of different numbers. Check this out. Let's run this code and observe the output in the console. A function does not have to return a value. Functions without return values are called void functions. Let me show you an example. This function hello world just prints the message hello world to the console. Let's invoke the function a couple of times, run the code and check the output. We call the function three times and the text hello world appears three times. Nice, so it works as expected. Next, let's practice a little bit by creating another function. This function should count all the occurrences of a specific character in a string. So we write function count character and define two parameters, text and character. Character is the actual character we want to count. For example, L and text is the text we want to search and count the characters in. Now let's write the code that actually does the counting within the function body. So first let's declare a variable, number of characters and assign the value zero to it. Then we have to create a loop to run through all the letters of the text step by step. Don't worry if you don't know anything about loops yet. We will learn everything about them in a future video. For now you just have to understand that this loop goes through each character of the text argument step by step. Now we have to check if the current character in the loop is the expected character we passed as an argument or not. We do that by using an if statement. So if the current character equals the character argument, we increment the variable number of letters by one. The loop finishes after it processed all the characters of the text. Then number of letters contains the total number of the specific character within the text. And finally we return number of characters. Now let's try our new function in action by invoking it a couple of times. So we write console.log count characters l, hello world. What result do you expect to appear in the console when we run the code? You are right, the correct answer is 3. Let's try it again by counting the E's in learning to code. So we write again console.log count characters and then the first argument is the letter E and the second argument is learning to code. And as you can see, when we run the code in the browser, the result 2 is printed to the console. But what happens if we count the L's in learning to count letters? What would you expect? The text learning to count letters has two L's. But why the result is only one? It's because the first L is uppercase. Let's modify our function to ignore the case of the letters. So we introduce another parameter, ignore case, which is a boolean. If this parameter is true, we want to call two lowercase on both the text parameter and the character parameter. So we make sure that our if statement always compares the lowercase versions of both. 
So now let's modify our last invocation of the function by passing the third argument true to enable the ignoring of the case of the characters. Let's run the code and observe the result. As you can see it printed the number 2 to the console. So it works as expected. There is something else you might have noticed. We can run functions even if we don't pass all of the parameters. Only our last invocation passes the third argument, but the previous function calls still work. That's because arguments that aren't passed to a function are interpreted as undefined by default. And guess what? Undefined values are false. That's why the function works the same as if we have passed false as the third argument. Cool, right? So that's it for this video. You have learned the basics of JavaScript functions today. Great job! We covered declarations, parameters, returns, function invocations and more. If you enjoyed this video, hit like, subscribe and drop any questions in the comments. So happy learning and see you next time!